Hi, I'm Professor Matthew Bate from the Astrophysics Group at the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom. I'm going to tell you how you may be able to see the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in late December this year, when Jupiter and Saturn will appear very close to each other in the evening sky. This will be their closest conjunction since 1623, almost 400 years ago. I'll start by giving a brief introduction to this year's Great Conjunction. I'll then tell you the dates on which it will be visible and when and where you'll have to look in order to see it. I'll then discuss what you may be able to expect to see when using the naked eye, a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. If you don't have your own telescope, astronomers from the University of Exeter are hoping to be able to live stream a view from a telescope one evening around the time of the Great Conjunction. I'll finish with a brief summary and some acknowledgements. A Great Conjunction refers to when the two largest planets in our solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, pass close to each other in the sky as viewed from Earth. Jupiter orbits the Sun approximately every 11.9 years, and Saturn every 29 and a half years. Roughly every 20 years, they appear close to each other in the sky. On December 21st this year, they will pass within one-tenth of a degree of each other. That's just one-fifth the diameter of the Moon, which is close enough to see both planets together in a telescope eyepiece. Most great conjunctions aren't this close. Typically, they only get as close as a couple of lunar diameters. This conjunction will be the closest since 1623, almost 400 years ago. Coincidentally, the Great Conjunction of 2080 will be similarly close, but that's still 60 years from now, so for most people this really will be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. This animation shows how the planets have been orbiting the Sun since the beginning of 2018. The white dotted line shows a line of sight from Earth to Jupiter. Watch how the orientation of this line changes as the planets orbit the Sun. Most of the time, the line moves anti-clockwise, but for short periods it moves clockwise because of the Earth's more rapid orbit. During these periods, the outer planets in the solar system appear to move backwards in the sky. This apparent backward motion is called retrograde motion. Despite this, on average from our perspective, Jupiter has been approaching Saturn over the past few years. On December 21st, the line of sight connects Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn. This is the Great Conjunction, when Jupiter and Saturn appear to be very close to each other in the sky as viewed from Earth. Notice that the Sun is also quite close to the line of sight at this time. We'll come back to this in a minute. The time of this year's Great Conjunction is 6.37pm Greenwich Mean Time, or Coordinated Universal Time, on Monday, December the 21st. But unlike many astronomical events, the exact timing is not very important because Jupiter and Saturn move so slowly in the sky. They'll be within about half the diameter of the Moon for four evenings, from December 19th through to the 23rd. Even at one or two lunar diameters apart, they'll be visible together in binoculars or a telescope at low magnification. This means that you'll have several nights on which to try to view the Great Conjunction, which is a good thing because it's winter in the UK and the whole of the Northern Hemisphere, and you'll need a clear piece of sky to see them. This animation shows where Jupiter and Saturn are in the sky around the Great Conjunction. Again, notice that they're quite close to the Sun, which is visible at the lower right. The animation zooms in to show the positions of Jupiter and Saturn on the 20th of December. You can also see the locations of the larger moons of Jupiter and Saturn. The four largest moons of Jupiter are known as the Galilean moons. They may be viewed using a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. The animation shows how Saturn moves relative to Jupiter from the 20th till the 23rd of December. So you can see that throughout this time, they're close together. Most small telescopes should allow the bands in Jupiter's atmosphere 
the rings of Saturn, and the Galilean moons to be visible simultaneously in a telescope eyepiece at medium magnification. The previous animation showed what the view would be like from space, without worrying about the light from the sun, the Earth's atmosphere, or where the horizon is. This animation shows the paths of Jupiter and Saturn across the sky from September 2020 through to mid-January 2021, as viewed from Exeter in Devon in the United Kingdom at 5pm Greenwich Mean Time each day. Jupiter and Saturn are visible in the southern sky in the UK throughout this period. You don't need to wait until late December to see them. Have a look for them on the next clear night. Mars, in the eastern evening sky, is also particularly bright during November. You can see that Jupiter and Saturn are slowly getting closer together throughout this period, but you can also see that they're close to the horizon. This means that you'll have to find a place with a clear view of the southwest horizon before the Great Conjunction. I've already mentioned that for the 2020 Great Conjunction, Jupiter and Saturn will appear quite close to the Sun. They'll be about 30 degrees east of the Sun. This has some advantages, but also some disadvantages. The good news is that to see them, you'll have to look soon after sunset. This is a good time for kids, and unlike some astronomical events, you don't need to get up in the middle of the night. From most places in the world, around the date of the conjunction, Jupiter and Saturn should be visible from about half an hour after sunset. They'll be low in the southwest from most of the northern hemisphere, and low in the west from most of the southern hemisphere. In the UK, they should be visible from about half past four in the afternoon. The bad news is that they'll only be visible for about an hour and a half each evening before they also set in the southwest or the west in most parts of the world. They'll also be close to the horizon. From Exeter in the UK, they'll be about 15 degrees above the horizon in the south southwest direction at half past four. It's about half an hour after sunset. And they'll sink to about four degrees above the horizon in the southwest at 6 p.m. So you'll need an observing site that has a clear view of the southwest horizon. The planets will be higher in the sky if you're observing from near the equator, and lower in the sky at high latitudes. For example, from Singapore, Jupiter and Saturn should become visible when they're around 25 degrees above the horizon. But from Edinburgh in Scotland, they'll only become visible around 10 degrees above the horizon. From Dunedin in New Zealand, they should become visible around 13 degrees above the horizon in the west-southwest about half an hour after sunset. You'll have a difficult job seeing the Great Conjunction at all from Iceland or further north, as from Iceland they'll only become visible about 5 degrees above the southern horizon. Here you see how Jupiter and Saturn appear on the evening of Monday, December the 21st, again as viewed from Exeter in the UK. The view should be similar from different parts of the UK, and indeed from any location in the northern hemisphere that has a similar latitude for the two hours after sunset at that location. You can see that you'll need a clear view close to the horizon towards the southwest. I'm now going to discuss what you may be able to see with the naked eye, using binoculars, or with a telescope, assuming of course that the weather cooperates. If you don't have access to a telescope, you may wish to join us as we attempt to live stream a view from a telescope over the internet. Jupiter and Saturn are both quite bright and clearly visible with the naked eye, even from light polluted cities. As you'll have seen from the second simulation, they're both visible throughout November and December, after sunset, fairly low in the southern or southwestern sky. They will slowly get closer together as December 21st approaches. I encourage you to go out on the next clear night to see if you can spot them. It will give you an idea of what to expect around the conjunction itself. At the Great Conjunction, 
they'll only be separated by one-fifth the apparent diameter of the Moon. They should both be clearly visible to the naked eye, very close together, but you won't see their moons or Saturn's rings just using your eyes. To see the Galilean moons, which are the four largest moons of Jupiter, you'll at least need a good pair of binoculars. The capability of binoculars is often specified by their magnification and the diameter of their main lenses. So for example, 8 by 50 means 8 times magnification and 50 millimeter diameter main lenses. 7 by 50s, 8 by 50s or 10 by 50s are good all-round binoculars. They are useful for daytime pursuits such as bird watching, but also for looking at astronomical objects such as the Moon, and particularly for comets and open star clusters such as the Pleiades. In particular, 7 or 8 times magnification is usually enough to see the Galilean moons of Jupiter. You may be tempted to think that higher magnification or larger lenses is better. However, be aware that as the magnification increases, it becomes increasingly more difficult to hold the binoculars steady. Larger lenses gather more light, which is particularly useful for faint objects such as comets and nebula, but larger lenses also tend to make the binoculars heavier and may be particularly difficult for children to hold. If you go for high magnification or large lenses, at some point you'll probably need to use a tripod either to hold the binoculars steady or because of their weight. A good quality small telescope at 25 to 50 times magnification is capable of imaging the Galilean moons of Jupiter, the rings of Saturn and the disk of Jupiter. As with binoculars, the primary characteristics of a telescope are the diameter of the main mirror or lens and the magnification. However, the magnification depends on the eyepiece that is used, which can usually be changed. Technically, the magnification is given by the ratio of the focal length of the telescope to the focal length of the eyepiece lens. The larger the diameter of the main mirror or lens, the more light the telescope gathers. This is important for viewing faint objects, but also because as more magnification is used, the fainter the image becomes. So in practice, a larger diameter telescope enables you to use higher magnification. But still don't expect to see the detail visible in this image here. The orientation of the rings will be similar because this photo was taken in July this year. But it was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, which has a 2.4 meter diameter mirror and it's in space, so it doesn't worry about the distortion effects from the atmosphere. The good thing about viewing the Great Conjunction of 2020 is that you don't need high magnification. A small telescope should be sufficient. The aim is to see both planets in the telescope eyepiece at the same time, similar to the images here, except without quite as much detail. The maximum magnification and the field of view that will allow this depends on the details of the telescope and the eyepiece that you have. But a magnification of about 50 times should be sufficient to view both planets, the cloud bands on Jupiter, the rings of Saturn, the Galilean moons, and perhaps some of the moons of Saturn. If you have the appropriate eyepieces, you can of course go to higher magnification to try and see more detail on the individual planets. If you don't have access to an appropriate pair of binoculars or a telescope, how can you observe the Great Conjunction apart from just using your eyes? Well, astronomers from the Physics and Astronomy Department at the University of Exeter are planning to try to live stream the view from a telescope over the internet. Not only do we hope to provide a live view of the Great Conjunction, but we plan to give a live commentary about what you're seeing. If you'd like to join us, please sign up at our website with your email address. We need your email address to notify you of the evening when we'll try to live stream. Because it's winter, and viewing astronomical objects always depends on the weather, we don't know exactly which evenings we'll be able to view Jupiter and Saturn. As I've already mentioned, both planets should easily be visible within the same telescope field of view at modest magnification 
for several days before and after December 21st. If you provide your email address, we'll be able to let you know which evenings we'll try to live stream on. To finish off, let me encourage you to try to see the Great Conjunction in the latter half of December yourself. Maybe you've got a telescope up in the attic that you haven't used for years. This would be the ideal time to get it down, dust it off and get it working again so that you can see the Great Conjunction yourself. For most people, this will truly be a once in a lifetime experience. Jupiter and Saturn will not be so close to each other again for another 60 years. Remember, Jupiter and Saturn are already visible in the evening sky and are slowly approaching each other, so you can start watching them before December. Look low in the southern sky from the northern hemisphere and low in the northern sky from the southern hemisphere. From December 19th through to the 23rd, Jupiter and Saturn will appear within half the moon's diameter of each other. These will be the best nights to view the Great Conjunction, weather permitting. From the northern hemisphere, you'll need a clear view of the southwest horizon. The planets should be visible for up to two hours after sunset. Try to see them with the naked eye, binoculars or through a telescope. Or join astronomers from Exeter's astrophysics group as we try to live stream the view from a telescope over the internet. I hope that somehow you managed to see the great conjunction of 2020.